word with you of encouragement at the end of such a tumultuous year. Uh, 2020, so many people declared that it was the year of vision. Boy, did we see things differently. I think that's an overstatement. But if we made it to this point, so many of us have come through difficulty. Some people came through challenges that they've never experienced in their entire life. So I came to share a prophetic word with you today to carry into 2021 with you. So I want to start here. Joel 2 and 25 says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. If you've heard that passage before, you probably can relate to it, meaning you're going to get back everything that you lost. Here, this word was uh, to the children of Israel. It said that they would have fruit because the locust, meaning and metaphorically, meaning anything that came against them that caused them to experience loss. I think this can relate to us in our situation today. But God promised them, just like he's promised us, to restore if we would turn our faces to him. In their case, they had to repent for some things that they had done. But if we would turn our faces to God, if we would depend solely on God as we have throughout this year, that he would restore everything that we have lost. 2021, I'm declaring ex accelerated overflow. As a prophet of the Lord, I'm declaring accelerated overflow. What does acceleration mean? It is an experience, a sudden movement that a supernatural surge to move you forward. Many of us in this year have been in a holding pattern. I'm a business owner, like many other business owners, people lost business, they lost jobs, things of such. You just felt like you were in a holding pattern. You're like, I just want my life to get back normal. I know that you all are probably feeling the same way. I just need some sense of normality. So here it is that God's promises are going to be fulfilled in one or more areas in your life. This is what I sense the Lord is saying this year. This is not a word to just give you false hope. This is a word to bring you revelation of what God has already said. Now, what happens, I want you to be ready because when God moves, he can move quickly, swiftly on your behalf. God is honoring the faithfulness and the favor that has been on your life throughout this entire year. For those who have been faithful, you have a responsibility in this. And what your responsibility and my responsibility is, is to shift our mindsets. That means we are moving from looking for God and looking for an answer to actually seeing what he is doing. I believe that this year we will get revelation of why we endured some of the things that we endured in 2020, that the story will Will be told in 2021. We must keep our eyes open to what the Holy Spirit is doing. So what I want to share, I want to give you five things, five things. I need you to get this. Five things that reveals that your prophetic purpose is ready to be unveiled. Your prophetic purpose. Every person has a prophetic pur purpose in the earth. And it's, it's in this season that we discover why we're really here. Now, most of us think that things got to go well before you understand that I'm operating in purpose. But most of us really discover purpose in the most difficult times of our lives. So number one, which I know you can relate to this, like I can relate. You have experience or you are experiencing one of the most difficult seasons of your life. I could just pause right there and say, think about that. For some, this has been the most challenging thing in your entire life. That is the first sign that you are ready for your prophetic purpose to be unveiled. So when I talk about relating to that, what this means is you're like, um, 
I try to do the right thing. I have purpose in my heart to move in the things of God, but I have come to a place where it seems like things are not working in my favor. If that's you, I want you to put that in the comments that yes, this has been one of the most challenging seasons of my life. For some people, they thought this was the end and for so many, this was the end, but you are still here. You survive. And by now you should know it's not because you have been the greatest or the most wonderful person, but God has a specific plan and assignment on your life. So here it is. Let's talk about David. I'm going to give you some characters so that we can better understand why we are encountering what you're encountering. So in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, and some of this may be familiar to you, but this is where David had just gone out to battle, being obedient to God, doing what God had uh, prompted him to do. And he returns to his home in Ziklag and every Everything had been destroyed. Have you ever thought that you were doing what God had purposed in your heart to do, in your life to do, and things seem to be going awry? Things seem not to be working in your favor. So here it is that David is in this position. Not only had he lost his homes, he lost his family, his property, that everything had been taken away, but then those that he was in battle with turned around and blamed him for everything, for this tragedy, said this is your fault. So if you could understand the position that he was in, many of us were, were in this same or are currently in the same position that you're like, I tried to do the right thing. I tried to do what God was commanding me or commissioning me to do. And here I am in this position and I don't even know how I got here. So here it is. David really could have given up easily and say, I am done with this. I, God, I just throw up my hands. I throw in the towel, but he didn't do that. Like many of you that are watching me right now, he stayed the course. He stayed on track. He remembered what God had told him. So i got to release that to you. If you want to experience that prophetic purpose, you said, I want my prophetic purpose to be unveiled. I want to know the truth of why I have encountered what I encountered. I want to know the truth of why I have endured some of the things that I've endured. You've got to press in. This is the time that David made the truck, the, the, the hard decisions, the difficult decisions in the midst of trouble. This is when leadership is really revealed, guys. So I need you to get this. What I need you to put in the comments right now, in spite of, I'm not done yet. God gave me that word a couple of weeks ago and I can't shake it. So I want to release that to you. This is the mindset that David had to have. I'm not done yet. In spite of what I lost, in spite of who left me, me or who blamed me or who said I wasn't worthy, I'm not done yet. And you have to say that with an assurance and a confidence that God is on your side. When you go to 1 Samuel the chap chapter uh, 30, you'll see that they came out victorious. David turned his face to God, became realigned and got back everything the enemy had taken from him. We will experience victory in spite of. You just have to stay the course. So the first thing, if you remember what I told you, is that when you realize I'm in one of the most difficult seasons of my life, but I believe it's a setup for greater things to come. Now I'm going to move to number two, because when things don't happen the way you plan, you said, Yes, this is a hard season, but the second the second thing that's a sign that lets you know you're ready for that prophetic purpose to be unveiled is when things don't happen the way I planned. In 2019, I had all these plans and things I wanted to do in 2020. God said it was the year of vision, but it didn't happen the way I thought. I knew we were going to see things as we've never seen them before, and that is the truth. But in this season, when things 
things didn't happen. You have all these plans and things you want to do. I was supposed to travel internationally and do some ministry stuff. And none of that was able to happen the way I thought it was going to happen. It still happened. But remember that quote, not the way that I thought it should happen. So many of us have had to revise our plans. We had to undo some things. We had to learn how to do things differently. When you're so accustomed to doing things the way you do them, sometimes life forces you to think about things a different way. And it can be downright un comfortable. Are y'all getting this downright uncomfortable in this position? So here it is that Ezekiel finds himself. Ezekiel was born to be a priest. He was a part of the Levitical order. So you know, whatever family you're born into, that's what your ministry assignment is. So he thought he was supposed to be a priest because he was born in the Levitical order. So here it is that he is captured and he's living in Babylon. So it looks like He's not going to be able to fulfill the call that is on his life. I know I'm preaching good already, but what happened in the 30th year of his life? You can read this in Ezekiel 1 and 1 and in, in the 30th year of his life in captivity that he had an encounter with God. Now this blew my mind because the encounter opened him up uh, to a portal of the prophetic. Even though he had a priestly mantle, God took him into a different area. In difficulties like this, we often discover other things that are part of us that we overlooked or that we never considered. So I need you to get this. In this difficult place of captivity, he launched into the ministry of the prophetic. I know that is true for so many people that are listening to me right now that you discovered some new things. I want you to tap that. That's me. I discovered some new things about my God. I discovered some new ministry things that I didn't even consider some things that I was afraid of. I realized that God has need of it and I'm now in a place of I'm ready to submit it. So I'm going to move a little faster. Let me get to number three. I hope you're enjoying this. You said I am ready because I have number one and number two. But if you don't, let's move to number three. Number three is when you've lost something that you thought you needed. Now, this right here would preach all by itself. It's so easy to become dependent on things you thought you needed. Sometimes it's jobs, it's money, it's people, relationships, things that you think you can't live without. Sometimes it's addictions, things. I, I'm, a, I'm a shoe addict. I can tell the truth, guys. I love shopping. But in this season, I could not go shopping because it really was dangerous. Now, listen, loss is hard. And, but it is a natural part of our lives. So when we lose things, it makes us uh, feel hurt and uncomfortable because you become so dependent on whatever it was. But this is what happens. God will never let what you lost be the best you ever had. Can you trust God for that? Can you type in the comments, I trust God for next. I trust God for for next. I need you to say this and say this with an everlasting conviction. So now let's talk about uh, Isaiah and, 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 and Uzziah. Uzziah was a king of Judah and Isaiah became dependent on Uzziah because he was a really good king. Things went well uh, under his tutelage. He restored some things for the children of Israel and they became really dependent upon him until sin entered into his life through pride. And when it entered into his life through pride, God removed him and he died. So I want you to imagine you being so dependent on something. They said, I got to work this nine to five. I got to make this money because I don't know how I'm going to survive. But in this season, you discovered new streams. You discovered new things and ways for provision to come into your house. It forced you to 
think differently. So when Isaiah lost Isaiah, this is when he began to see God for himself. His destiny as a prophet became alive. And this is when he really recognized that he could hear God and he could see God. Now the loss was devastating, but the reveal that came after that loss must have blown his mind. Can you understand that today? So number four, the fourth way of recognizing that I am ready for my prophetic purpose to be unveiled is that I have been encountering opposition. Things have been blocking my promise. When you know what God has been saying to you about you and how God wants to move through you, but there is opposition trying to stop you. Opposition tries to overtake you. Sometimes it happens through other people. Sometimes it happens through circumstances. Sometimes it happens because we are immature and not ready. This is where ideas fail. This is where sometimes you lose your confidence or you're unsure or uncertain about what it is that God wants to really do through you or how he's going to do it through you. So sometimes it looks like things are just not coming together. If that's you, I need you to give me a thumbs up. Yes, prophet says you are talking to me. And you're like, it's not that I have lost hope or I don't believe God. I do, but it is discouraging at this juncture. So here it is. I want to talk about Caleb because a lot of people talk about Caleb and him being one of the ones to spy out the land and bring back an awesome report. But I don't know if you knew this, about Caleb that because of his faithfulness to God that Moses prophesied or spoke that he would receive uh, 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 he would receive abundance land and this is something that Joshua said to him too that he would receive an abundance because of his faithfulness so here it is that he's requesting what God promised him and when it's time for him to take it the day before he recognizes that there are Canaanites or giants in the land and the land was Hebrew now God promised it to him. I need y'all to get this prophetically. Has God ever promised anything to you? And it seems like it is so hard to get it because I don't know somewhere in our minds we think whenever God promises us something it's supposed we're supposed to just skate right through and just go right to it and get it without any difficulty or without any um, um opposition and so here it is he says God promised this thing to me but it is my responsibility I feel a preach coming on to drive out the things that are trying to stop me from fulfilling the promises of God. God did say it about you and just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's not God. Sometimes you have to discover the more in you to get to the thing that God has promised you. Do you understand this today? So this season was hard. So the things that he told you in 2018 or 2019 or even in 2020, they are still yours. You have a responsibility to drive out every ounce of opposition that tries to stop you from fulfilling the promise that God has for your life. I need you to type in the comments, I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. I'm here for all all of it, everything that God has promised me, I will not get this close to the promise. I survived 2020 because there is destiny awaiting me. I'm coming up on number five. So here it is. Number five is when you've been repositioned by God. Now I need you to get this because this doesn't mean that you reposition yourself. I realize that a lot of people are moving around trying to do things physically trying to discover next. But every move that you take, you better be assured that God told you to do it or you will remove yourself from a position or a posture from receiving the abundance that God is releasing. And I need you to get this today. Yes, in this season, when you reposition, you are forced out of your comfort zone. But you got to be clear. This is a place where you will think Think 
differently. Your perceptions and ideas must be different. You will see differently and you will hear differently. You will not encounter God the same in 2021 like you did in 2020 or 2019. There are some things that have happened in the secret place in your closet when you couldn't get to anybody that you're going to come out refreshed. You're going to come out with a new mindset and a brand new attitude about what God means to you and how desperate you are to fulfill the plans that he has for your life. Are you getting this today? And so here this is with Ruth, that Ruth was in a position and people like to preach about her Boaz. But I want you to know this dear girl was stripped of everything she knew, everything that was familiar, and she was launched into a position to do something she had never done before. And because of her willingness, don't miss this, catch this, her willingness to do what God had commanded her, she received the blessing. She and her family received the blessing and she wound up becoming a part of the lineage of Christ. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean a physical move because fleshly people think that a physical move is going to end all your problems and open up new doors. But if your mind doesn't change, if you are not aligned with what God has ordained for your life, you will still be out of place and you will not receive. What we're talking about is a spiritual move. So lastly, I wanted to remind you of what God is releasing in this season 2021. God has released a word on us and he has said crowned. And I need you to put that in the comments. Crown. You said prophetess, it doesn't feel like a crown, a coronation. But here it is, the word of the Lord that God gave TLC and he gave us to share with you is Psalm 65, 11. And when this word came, y'all, I was over, I was just overjoyed because I could see this thing in the Holy Ghost. It says, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Did you get that? You crown the year with the bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. What does that mean? Oh my God. That means even in the difficulty, the places where you thought you weren't going to yield anything, God says you're going to have overflow. There's going to be a crazy abundance in the year of 2021. Why? It's a harvest. So for those who have been sowing, who've been sowing quietly, who continue to do what God was commanding them to do, who didn't take a break from pursuing God, those who were not on the sideline, but stayed in the game and said, God, I'm going to go through until the end. No matter how long you have waited, be ready because God can open doors quickly. I need you to receive this. God is escorting you into a new season. God is escorting you. So you you're not alone. I know it feels like it at times. I know you felt abandoned at times. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you can understand that, you said, I am crown. This is the year of coronation. This is the year that I recognize my royalty. This is the year that I recognize who I am truly in God and why I was able to endure and why I was able to stand. I have been sustained because the power of God is with me. That is the word for 2021. Be encouraged in the Lord and happy new year to you and to yours.